Linda will have our announcements this morning. Good morning and welcome to Hill Country Christian Church. We especially want to extend a welcome to our visitors and hope you receive a blessing from worshiping with us today. I do not know of any specific announcements. Marcia, do you have some? Just stuff the bus will be coming up on August 1st. We are responsible for 300 Crayola crayons and uh, if you would like to donate towards them, it, they can be purchased uh, through uh, tax-free up at Walmart, and uh, we will be taking them up there this year. We're not having the day of service, which we normally go where the ch school children come to us. We will stuff the bus. The bus will go to them. Okay, does anyone else have any announcements? Kathy. Oh. Okay, men's breakfast Saturday and yes. the memorial service for Mildred Powell will be then at one o'clock on Saturday. And unfortunately, we cannot go to the internment at Fort Sam Houston because there's a specific number of people that they let in and they, the family makes up for more than that. But I will be doing the service, but unfortunately we can't all go. Will there be anything here? No, the, well, the, the memorial service will be here. Oh, okay. The burial is at Fort Sam Houston on the ninth. Thursday. The ninth. The okay. ninth. And then the, the memorial service will be here. Here on Saturday at 1. Right. And uh, June 11th uh, will be the memorial service at 1 o'clock, and after the service, there will be refreshments at, uh, served. Okay, and there will be refreshments after the memorial service, so Saturday afternoon at 1. Okay, any other announcements? Okay, then if you are able, please stand for the lighting of the candle. We always light a candle to remind us of the presence with us now and forevermore of the Holy Spirit. Our call to worship this morning is from the book of Isaiah. This comes to us from the ninth chapter, the fourth verse. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, you have broken. If you're able, please remain standing. At <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Marcia Johnston, and I'm speaking for Gail Johnston while he's recovering with his eye problems. Yesterday, we celebrated the 4th of July, Independence Day. We will always remember this year of the novel COVID-19, where we wore masks and have social distancing. We had, a peace, we had peaceful demonstrations and riots over the death of George Floyd. People have desecrated and torn down many statues. It is a time of unrest. But let us never forget the significance of the 4th of July. It is the day to remember all those who have fought hard and won our freedom for us. Our freedom came as a great price. It has cost our forefather forefathers tremendous sacrifices. It cost many of them their very lives to develop this nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. We have, that, we have that because of their fight, their struggles, the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. As we think of the freedoms we can enjoy in our land, we need to spend some time in thankfulness to our God, to our Lord, and for, and for those freedoms. Let us never, ever neglect to be thankful for all that we do have in our country. 
It almost makes us think of another freedom. It's the freedom that we have spiritually. The freedom that we have if we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the sacrifice he made for us to have that freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from freedom from its presence and the freedom to live in him. I would like to read a small poem that I found on Facebook. Please stand now and bow your head. Make sure you test positive for faith. Keep your distance from doubt and isolate yourself from fear. Trust in God through it all. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of Christ is a symbol of reconciliation that is expressed through a greeting. And Jesus said, my peace I give to you not as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Thank you. The scripture this morning is Second Peter, chapter 1, 16 through 18. For we did not follow cleverly designed myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus. I believe you are supposed to stand for the reading of the word. <laughs> <coughs> or the Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father, that when his voice was conveyed to him by the maj majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please be seated. Please be seated. And please join me in prayer. Precious Lord, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In studying 1 Peter and 2 Peter, it occurred to me that 1 Peter had to do with the building of God's holy church. We talked about each of us being a rock of a different size with different skills and how those rocks can get placed on top of each other to form the church for Jesus Christ. And then it occurred to me that Peter too. Second Peter was about us as individuals and how we fit personally into this idea of Christianity. And the first thing we start with is belief. And many of you know from things I've said in the past, that my belief is based principally on today. I 
I love the stories of the Bible. I love the stories of the wonderful things that God did in the world. And I love hearing about what Jesus Christ did. But for me and my belief, I come to the world as it is. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, Linda and I kind of needed a little infusion of something different. We needed to get out of the house. It was closing in on us, so we packed up and headed west. And went toward Rock Springs and Brackettville in that direction, and that's the places that we get filled. Now, I got to tell you, we didn't exactly see this picture. But the fact is that with every turn in the road and every place we went, the world just kind of stretched out there. And it was beautiful. And it was wonderful. And the animals would run through and a roadrunner would come across and a hawk would fly over and our hearts were closer to God because of being where we were and seeing what we were seeing. And my faith says to me, this was not an accident. This is not something that haphazardly was caused by some coincidence of atoms coming together. I see a pattern. I see a plan. I see God in heaven. Jim, we are supposed to right now be on a cruise in, we, we were going to go to uh, Iceland and Greenland this year. For some reason, we decided not to go on the cruise. But what we were going to have seen would have been the Aurora Borealis. Now, Folks, you can't tell me that that kind of thing is an accident. I mean, if you're living up in the northern part of the world, you don't have a lot other than snow and this. But man, what a thing to see. Those amazing things of nature. And of course, it's not just this world, Jim. But th this happens to be, what, Milky Way. This is the Milky Way. One of the greatest scientists of our time is gone now, Carl Sagan. Lived his life as an atheist. But as he came closer to death, he admitted that there is no explanation for those first few atoms that got together to form our world. There is no possible explanation other than God. Our reading today, interestingly enough, Peter even gave us a little bit of idea when he said, the Word of God existed long ago. By the Word of God, heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed of water by means of water. 
That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, they knew, maybe, that Adam and Eve was a wonderful story, but it may not have exactly happened that way. Yeah? And this happens to be, you just can't look at something like that. This happens to be a waterfall in Argentina. You can't look at something like that and think, it's just random. It just happened. Now, the purpose for me talking about God and those wonders comes down to one thing, Jim. The dreaded word, that horrible word, it's not four letters, but we think of it as such, evangelism. What is our job what is our responsibility? What is our function as a rock building the church of our Lord Jesus Christ? It's not keeping unto ourselves. It's not internal. It is external. Our job is to shine so brightly that people wonder what's causing it. Our job is to be so happy and joyful in Jesus Christ that people want a little of that themselves. That, to me, is what evangelism is all about. That, to me, is what participation in a church is all about. Jim? What we hear in today's scripture is that the people that surrounded P Peter at that day and time were witnesses to Jesus Christ and all that Jesus Christ did. And they were witnesses to God in heaven coming in a booming voice and saying, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. I don't know about you, but I didn't participate in any of these things from the first century. And if I'm telling someone about those things that occurred, they're going to say, yeah, okay. But I can be a witness to what Jesus Christ has done personally in my life and the lives of those around me. I, I might not be able to tell the stories of the Bible in such a way that people latch on to it and say, I, I need some of that. But I can tell people, I was a sinner. I, I was the worst kind of a sinner. I worshipped everything there was to worship besides God. I worshipped money. I worshipped all sorts of things other than God. And all that ever did for me was make me want more of what I didn't need. Once, I found in my life that the joy and the happiness came from that relationship with Jesus Christ 
and that money wasn't that important and that all the other things that got in the way were not that important. Then I found true happiness in Jesus Christ. So we as individuals may not be the best speakers, may not be the best people to relate to others, but each one of you there has an interesting story about why you are here, why you have begun on a walk of faith. You have got a story that's your own, that's yours alone. Jim? What have you witnessed? Tell your story. Let people understand why you came to God. I have worked with a lot of people who were destroyed by one addiction or another. And the only way that I have found that you can deal with a person with addiction is to replace the addiction with Jesus Christ. Give them something to hold on to. To begin to see in their lives what a beautiful, glorious thing it is. Just to wake up in the morning and see the sunshine and the trees and the grass, the animals. It is a wonderful life as long as we can come to that realization. Jim? 2 Peter 2.9 The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial. Don't you love that? Kathy cured me of this a couple weeks ago because I said in a prayer that I was praying for the vaccine. And Kathy reminded me that that's kind of God's job as to how to deal with those sorts of things. And I don't need to tell God how to do it. I mean, I can pray that God move in God's own mysterious way. You have been through trials. You have been rescued from those trials. And God had a part in that. I don't always know the outcome when I work with somebody that's got an addiction. I leave that up to God. Luna and I took in a young lady. I come across her in jail. And she was a prostitute. She'd been picked up for various things. And I went to see her in jail and I found out she was only 15 years old. She wasn't even supposed to be in jail. 
So we got it moved over to juvenile. And we started going to visit her, taking her pizza. Used to be able to do that in juvenile. I don't think you can anymore. We checked her out one weekend. Brought her home. And she took off. I had a few phone calls from her afterward, but don't know what happened. Boy, did I get in trouble with the judge Monday morning when I went in and he says, Larry, did you tell me, tell me you checked out a prostitute and you didn't bring her back? <laughs> well, judge, that was 20 years ago and he still says that same thing to me every time I see him. We touched her. We touched her heart. I don't know. I don't know if we did any good that one weekend with her. But we did our best. God takes it from there. God takes it from there. Jim? Now, here's the thing we have to be a little careful of. I love these words. <laughs> P Peter, Peter doesn't spare anything, you know. Peter started talking about that bombastic nonsense that sometimes people hear. How many times in our life have we heard of cults, Koresh, those kind of things? That's why I need to remind you that you are the priest, not the guy or woman at the front of the room who's talking. They are neither more nor less in your connection to God. Your connection to God is something personal within you. And if something you hear doesn't seem to make sense, it just might not be God's Word. I truly enjoyed what Peter had to say about each of us. Jim? In 2 Peter 3, 14 to 18, we wait upon the Lord. He repeats the thing that you and I have said so many times, that in the eyes of the Lord a day might be a thousand years, and a thousand years might be a day. We strive. We don't always succeed. I didn't get that little girl back to juvenile, but we tried our best. We have patience. Boy, that's one of the things we forgot to give the next generation coming up, is patience and perseverance. It is our duty, our job, to grow in grace. To little, just get a little closer to God every single day. To take time every day to move our lives a little closer to God in heaven and grow in our knowledge which I mean you can't sleep with the Bible under your pillow and have it be absorbed you actually have to open the thing and read about what God has done 
in the world. How else are you going to see God working in the world today? You've you got to actually study. And just because somebody writes a book doesn't mean that it's true. You know, I know it's shocking to know, but just because you see something on the internet doesn't make it true. For a while there, I think we all thought that, my goodness, if it's published on the internet, it's got to be true. But you've got to be careful of these things. I, I wanted to read to you the last chapter of this Second Peter. I, I really enjoyed this. Therefore, this is the uh, third chapter, the 14th through the 18th verse. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting these things, strive to be bound by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord's salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul. That's, this has to be then a little bit down the road in the ministry because it took Paul a long, a long time to be accepted by the disciples. But here we see that acceptance. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. Speaking of this, as he does in all his letters. This is the beautiful thing. There are some things in them hard to understand, which the ignorant and the unstable twist to their own destruction. That's interesting, huh? Ever know anybody to take some of the words of Paul? and twist them to something that Paul might not have meant? You, therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, prepare that you are not carried away with the error of the lawless and lose your own stability, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him the glory be now and to the day of eternity. Amen. You don't need to go stand on a street corner. But you need to shine. You don't have to preach. You don't have to go up to people and tell them they're doing something wrong. But you need to be a shining example of what it is to be our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we try. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we stumble. But Lord, every day, every single day, day. Help us to be closer to You. More in love with You. More at peace with You. Make us better every day. We ask this in Your most gracious name.
Amen.